Hey guys, today I'm going to be talking about saving money from Magic the Gathering. Uh, the reason I'm talking about this particular issue is the easiest way to build a collection to not spend so much money on Magic cards is to save money. Um, and when you're saving money, it's kind of like you're spending money wisely. So it's buying singles. Uh, I, I know I've been on records for saying fat packs and booster boxes and all that stuff. I recommend for newer players just so you can have that experience. If you define opening a box of magic cards as an experience, and I do at this point, then it's worth the experience, but it's not really going to help your standard deck as much as spending that much money in singles. Unless you are crazily uh, lucky. Um, but in that, I mean, you can't always rely on luck that often. Then. So when you're spending money on magic cards, or when you're saving money on magic cards, it comes down to spending money on singles and products that you feel like have value. So now let me explain something about like a true name nemesis or a commander deck. A lot of these pre-con decks have some value in them, but the problem is they don't have enough value to overcome singles unless you are trading with your EDH group. So to spend less money, you have to trade. That's just how it is. You can buy singles, but when a deck, you want to try a new deck, you got to trade out of your singles into other cards. And so saving money in Magic cards means spending money extremely wisely on cards that you feel like, like Hero's Downfall, if you purchased it in the beginning and there was only like four or five bucks in the beginning, it went up to 10 bucks, but then went down to five bucks, and then after rotation, it'll probably go down to no money, but you get the value of you playing it and having a play set of Hero's Downfall uh, extremely valuable. So when I view a card, I view a card in terms of how much I'm gonna play the card. So if I'm playing the card all the time, like a modern card, if I have a Goblin Guide, yeah, I'll pay $8 for Goblin Guide, but no, I'm not gonna pay $40 for Goblin Guide. And luckily, he's gonna get a reprint soon. But the value you get from Goblin Guide, every time you play him, you get value back. That's how I look at it. So when I look at it, I look at saving money from Magic cards, very similar to not spending money on cards you do not play, and, or trading cards that you do no longer play with for cards that you need. And that's the biggest difference in savings, is if you can trade a card that you have, for a card that you need. Otherwise, you would have to buy that card, right? So knowing how to trade, and sometimes you have to lose value trading, and many times it's fine, especially uh, during events um, where cards are hyped up, or when a set first releases, you can trade into a lot of the staples from the last set. So just manage your money well, uh, have a budget. Uh, budgeting yourself is the best way to go. If you say I have $50 to spend on Magic this month, and that includes like Friday Night Magic, that includes drafts, then you are being forced to budget and play within your means, uh, which is very good because that means when rotation happens or uh, some cards go up and down, up and down all the time, you are not exposed uh, financially at least because you have budget yourself um, and you're not speculating on a card and hoping it goes up and I'll pay for the next deck. Uh, that's kind of like a Ponzi scheme of some type or a pyramid scheme. Uh, you don't want to you don't want to play the MTG finance game if you are a normal magic player because most people will lose at that game. And the reason they lose at the game isn't because they're bad at finance, it's because they have no idea how to sell the card. And even if they sell the card at buy list, that's 50, at least 50% of your profit gone. Just gone. And I mean, if you double a card, that's pretty amazing. If a card goes up double, like you just you should feel really good about that. But guess what? After mailing, shipping, and your time, you've lost money in that card. So MTG Finance, not a great way when you're trying to save money playing Magic the Gathering. Uh, the, the simplest way is to have a budget, trade for what you need as often as you can, even if you lose some value because it's better than buying the card and spending as little cash as possible. Um, asking friends to borrow cards. Like I, 
will lend out cards all the time. Like it's not a big deal to me because uh, I mean, it is a bigger deal if I only have like a playset of the card. But a lot of the cards, especially in standard, I have more than a playset for. So if it's a single ten or two, or it's in, if it's in my tray binder, I'm more than happy to let you borrow the card, assuming that you I've seen you more than once, right? And I feel like that's true for most players. Um, you just give the card back right after uh, the game is over. And that's pretty... Uh, if you have a good community, no one... People do that. And that's one of the things you should look for in the community is to see if like, people are letting other people borrow cards. And um, in my com two communities I'm in, uh, definitely that happens every single FNM. That happens every single... Game day it happens all the time because people trust each other, and that's uh, that's the sign of a very strong community. Bye, guys.